Your attention, please. During every suspenseful moment of the running of the motion picture macabre, the life of everyone in this theater will be insured by Lloyd's of London for $1,000 against death by fright. My name is Jeffrey Schwarz, and I'm the producer and director of Spine Tingler, the William Castle story. It's a feature-length documentary about William Castle, who was the last great American showman. The first time in motion picture history, members of the audience, including you, will actually play a part in the picture. He would not have been remarkable at all if it wasn't for the fact that he did this series of horror films in the 50s and 60s that had these audience participation gimmicks built in. Every picture has to have a gimmick, something to sell. He must have some sort of a campaign plan. He knew that in order to sort of put himself out there and get himself noticed, he'd have to do things that were really outrageous and crazy. He left the studio to produce an independent horror film because horror films were big at that time. He mortgaged his house, uh, he bought the rights to this, this book, a horror book, he made the movie, but he needed to ensure that there would be people coming in to pay their admission to see his film. I am taking this huge risk, I've mortgaged the house, how do I make sure that the audiences come? That fear, and he was driven by fear, you know, made his mind work. So he decided to come up with a, his first publicity gimmick, which was a Lloyd's of London insurance policy against death by fright. So it was an $1,000 insurance policy. If you died of fright during the film, your beneficiaries would be paid $1,000. If you were in the movie and you dropped dead, your beneficiary would collect $1,000. <laughs> My favorite William Castle gimmick is called Percepto, and that was a gimmick that he developed for a movie called The Tingler. Now we have Percepto. 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 At a certain point of the movie, the Tingler is loose in the theater, the lights go out, Vincent Price's voice comes up on the uh, loudspeaker and says, ladies and gentlemen, the Tingler is loose in this theater, and he tells everyone to scream, scream for your lives. That was the things under the seats. You make the seat vibrate. So that was a sensation. Everyone went to see that movie, and um, that was called Percepto. I'm William Castle, and uh, uh, this wheelchair is just to rest my tired nerves after producing a picture like this one. He was the low rent Hitchcock, and I mean that with great respect. He was more fun than Hitchcock. I mean, Hitchcock only had one suit. Bill was very aware and very much in awe of Alfred Hitchcock. His idol, the man he called the master. Hitchcock was the class act, certainly. William Castle was his poor cousin. William Castle, being Jewish, um, influenced his life in that he had to work harder than anybody else to get to where he wanted to be. He wasn't sort of handed anything on a silver platter, and I think uh, that's a, 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 there's a commonality there in the Jewish experience. He grew up on the streets of, of New York. He was an orphan. He uh, had no connections whatsoever to Hollywood. So in order to get out there, he had to, he had to hustle, especially at that time when there was so much anti-Semitism and so much... Uh, a sort of fear and loathing around a Jewish person. Welcome to homicidal. When William Castle passed away, he he thought he was a failure in a way. I mean, he because he wanted to make great films and was in a way relegated to making B films and horror films. He really thought that um, he never really got to reach the heights that he was intended to reach. So when he passed away, he he thought he was a failure, which I found really touching. He was a guy who I think is part of the history of Hollywood who really never got his due. And I wanted to make this film to uh, reintroduce him to the public. He was as famous as Alfred Hitchcock in his day for a few years. And then, of course, as things happen, uh, the, the mood changed in the country, uh, Vietnam happened, the, the JFK assassination happened, and it, we became a much more cynical country. Now we're probably more cynical than we've ever been. I hope this movie can remind people of sort of the joy of showmanship and maybe inspire a new generation to try some of this stuff out.